well run and welcome all those families that face the challenge of crumbling foundations in our community. It is our hope that our prayers here today will help you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of fortitude in the face of trying times. We know that our faith will see us through all things. We are most pleased to have you with us as our guests. We now continue in our prayers. First, let me say how very happy I am to be able to visit your beautiful parish and church today. You know, it's uh, something of a scary thing when a pastor hears the bishops coming. And today, Father was doubly scared because all the lights went out just before I came. But fortunately, they're working again, so God is good. Few gospel episodes describe a situation quite as moving as today's gospel from Mark. It tells us about the raising from the dead of the only son of a widowed mother. Jesus confronts two very sad facts of life, the reality of death and the experience of loss. In this case, a twice grieved woman who lost both her husband and son, and who in the social order of those times faced impoverishment as a result. Now, even though we enjoy many of the benefits of modern medicine, a longer lifespan, and a system of social assistance, each of us can still identify with today's gospel story because it's still our story a story marred by death and by grief. Who among us has not been touched by these two harsh realities, either in our own lives or the lives of our families and friends? The Bible, it's important to remember, reveals to us that these evils are not of God's creation, but they are the result of sin. But the scriptures also tell us that the whole mission of Jesus, prefigured by the great prophet in the Old Testament, Elijah, in our first reading, his whole mission is to restore us to that fullness of life for which we were created, to wipe away all our tears and bring us to the fullness of life and joy. Our Heavenly Father is full of loving kindness, and Jesus said, whoever sees me sees the Father. And during this year of mercy, this jubilee year called by Pope Francis, we are reminded that we not only look to Jesus for mercy, but as he has commanded us, we must ourselves be merciful as the Father is merciful. Jesus did not eradicate physical sickness or death for everyone in his day at the time that he raised up this young man in the town of Nain. What Jesus did do was to summon all people then and now to believe in him, to believe in Jesus. I think all of us here today believe that God has the power to heal and to raise from the dead. But what about faith in Jesus? What about faith and trust in God when no miracle is forthcoming? What Jesus did in his earthly life was a sign, a sign for the people at that time and now a sign for us that he has the power over life and death. And therefore we can believe in him and trust him no matter what happens. This is the gospel. This is the good news, not of human origin, as St. Paul puts it in the second reading. It is the gospel that changed Paul's life from being a persecutor of the church to a preacher of the gospel that is still proclaimed to us now 2,000 years later. We too are called to believe it, to believe in Jesus and let him change our lives. However, when we ourselves face trials and tribulations and sufferings like those played out in the town of Nain so long ago, then our faith is easier said than done. 
That is when we need to take to heart with deep faith the words of Christ in the gospel, do not weep, I tell you, arise. I'm reminded of the prayer revealed to St. Faustina that we celebrated on Divine Mercy Sunday, the week after Easter. It's a very simple prayer. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. This prayer refers not so much to miracles as it does to those circumstances of affliction when God seems silent, when God seems absent, when God seems very far away. How can we make sense of this? How can we understand the meaning of apparently unrelieved suffering, loss, or pain? And we can also turn to the wisdom of another great figure, blessed, soon to be saint, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She once wrote this, suffering will never be completely absent from our lives, so don't be afraid of suffering. Suffering in and of itself is useless, but suffering that is shared with the passion of Christ is a wonderful gift and a sign of love. Christ's suffering proved to be a gift, the greatest gift of love, because through his suffering, our sins were atoned for. Remember that the passion of Christ ends always in the joy of the resurrection. My brothers and sisters, as I stand before you, I'm keenly aware that suffering and loss, anxiety and fear can take many forms. My heart goes out to the many homeowners in this area whose homes are threatened by crumbling foundations and who must feel very frustrated in their search for relief and for help. Now, we all have to acknowledge that material things are not as important as life itself, but for those who face the fear of losing their house and the investment it represents, we all want to be true neighbors to them in every way possible, both materially by working for a just solution and supporting them, and also spiritually by our prayerful solidarity. You know, I've been a priest now for 40 years, and in my experience many times, and I'm sure Father Dolan can attest to this as well, sometimes people who are put in very difficult situations, a really miraculous thing can happen for them in the sense that in the providence of God, things that they never would have imagined or things took a turn that they would not have thought of, in which, in a very subtle way, the providence of God works for good, even in the midst of great difficulty and trial and suffering. That is not to take away for a moment from the efforts that people make politically or legally to vindicate their rights and to seek a solution. But as people of faith, we know there's also a higher providence that governs our lives in times of difficulty, in times of material want, and when circumstances seem to be ranged uh, very strongly against us and against our being vindicated or us having a solution to what we face. And yet, as we read in the scriptures, that God's power is made perfect in weakness. And we have to always hold on to that great faith and that great trust. My dear brothers and sisters, the same Jesus who cured the sick and raised the dead is present here at this Mass. He is speaking to us through his word. He's feeding us with his body and blood and Holy Communion. And he's now saying to us, even though sometimes we're a little deaf to it, he's saying, do not weep, do not be afraid, have faith. Or as he says in another place in the gospel, fear is useless, what is needed is trust. No easy task, no easy task to be sure, but absolutely necessary if we are to pass the test of faith by which we come to eternal life. So let's pray for the grace to believe that in every circumstance of life, however joyful or difficult, 
the Lord has a loving and redemptive plan for our good and for the good of the world. And may we always repeat in the very depths of our hearts and souls and minds, my Jesus, I trust in you.